The final moments for a history-making link-up in orbit. Pretty incredible images as the SpaceX crew in the Dragon capsule make their final approach to the International Space Station. The capsule and the space station making the connections. They fly around the Earth at more than 28,000 kilometers an hour. Resilience SpaceX docking sequence is complete. Welcome to the ISS, Resilience. That capped a 27-hour maiden voyage for the newly designed capsule. And you heard its nickname there, Resilience. Laura, I love that name. They chose it because of everything that we're going through in 2020 required a whole lot of resilience. It was a pretty incredible journey, Laura. Take us through some of the highlights. That's right. So there's four astronauts on board making history, as you mentioned, Heather, docking last night in their new home for six months. So three Americans, one Japanese astronaut there, linking up with some more people on the ISS. And in fact, this is the first time there have been seven astronauts on the ISS, according to a NASA webpage I was just reading. This new era for commercially developed spacecraft sending Americans into space, privately built, privately owned, privately operated. We haven't seen this before because NASA has relied on the Russian Soyuz capsule to get its astronauts into space for nearly a decade now. But back in 2014, it did a deal with SpaceX, another with Boeing, to transport their astronauts. And though we saw that test flight back in May with a pair of astronauts up to the ISS for two months, this is the first time it's delivered a full crew, as you see there, the joy on their faces, for the full half year stay. And in fact, in April, another Dragon will bring up their replacements. So momentous when it docked uh, late last night, and we heard from Dragon's commander, Mike Hopkins. Here's what he said. It's been an incredible journey, and uh, it's it's really amazing that this is march, uh, marking the start of of operational. Uh crew rotation missions to the International Space Station from the Florida coast. And, and so it was uh, it was an amazing ride. I, I can't tell you uh, how excited we were when uh, that rocket lifted off the pad. And so we are so excited to be here. Um, we are humbled and uh, we are excited to be a part of uh, this great expedition. A moment years in the making and no wonder the excitement is so great. It does unlock a whole range of possibilities for space flight now going into the future. Laura, the astronauts took us because of course there's cameras there as we get to, they take us on a tour when we look around. So you see controls, you see storage, and uh, maybe a little bit of a surprise. Take a look at this tape with me. I'm not talking through the uh, lower tier of the capsule. This is a quite a room area. There might be some other creatures kind of slowly coming through you. Is that what I think it is, Laura? <laughs> yeah, the force <laughs> was with them on that flight, Heather. That's Baby Yoda flying around there. They use Baby Yoda as a zero gravity indicator. What that means is it helps them determine when the spacecraft is in orbit, when it's reached a microgravity environment. So if Yoda's bouncing around like that, it means microgravity has been achieved. And while this is a film crossover, it won't actually be the last for SpaceX because it has private uh, astronaut missions booked and it's going to be flying Tom Cruise on one of them, flying him into space to shoot a NASA-backed film. So something a bit unusual there. Might be a little while before you and I head into space, Heather, though. Hopes are still high. But as you mentioned, the name resilience, hope, inspiration in a time of COVID. Of course, SpaceX founder Elon Musk couldn't be there yesterday because he has a suspected case of COVID himself. But with that name and with that mission, NASA certainly has a lot of hope for what the future of American space travel is going to look like. All of that and Baby Yoda too. Amazing. It is, Laura. Thank you so much, Laura McQuillan.